Nine Tails list. Seeing a Max Potion is a hint towards something like a Decidueye, but can't confirm that just yet. Whereas we're going to see Joey. He's going to be playing what looks to be a Zoroark control deck, similar to what we saw Caleb playing earlier in the day. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Obviously, if it is a Decidueye variant, you can't control that sort of damage because that's coming down from the Decidueyes every single turn. Um, but you can at least control the energy cards. Oh All right, boy. boy. We're breaking our streak of <laughs> having similar decks on stream. It is Gardevoir GX Here versus that Zora Control. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this matchup actually plays out because Natalia can just put a bunch of energy in play out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. One of the things about her list compared to Robin's that we saw in the last round, she's not playing that one zero one line of Solgaleo, so she can't really go like as infinite as Robin perhaps could against some of the controlling decks, but she still does have uh, the Twilight GX attack available for the Gardevoir, so trying to make the most out of your energy is going to be the crucial thing for her to make sure that she's able to take big knockouts turn by turn as she kicks off with that Rolts in the active position, Mudkip in the back, and she's going to fire off a Cynthia from her Tapu Lele here. Yeah, and uh, not having the Sogaleo GX in her deck might actually prove beneficial because it could be a little bit more consistent mm -hmm. against this control type deck. Yeah, absolutely. She is going to uh, draw into a double color synergy. She also has Swamper, a couple max potions. She is eyeing up a rare candy as well, so her turn two is not too shabby at all. Yeah, uh, missing that Professor Elm's lecture, but at least getting a couple basics in play. No Alolan Vulpix on yeah. this side of the field. No Vulpix, but she's just got the hard Swamper for rare candy anyway, so she can still draw into a lot of stuff. We are going to see Joey go for that more typical turn one, going for that Tapu Lele. He's already eyeing up the Professor Elm's lecture as he starts to search through his deck. Always a good habit to get involved with if you are thinking about joining the Pokemon trading card game. Knowing what cards are prized is a great way to know exactly what you have accessible to you throughout the game, especially a deck like Zoroark, which draws so many cards. You want to be digging for, you know, things that you actually can achieve. You don't want to be digging and hoping and getting rid of important resources if it's just been prized this whole time. Yeah, and I see one card in Joe's deck that we didn't see coming to play much in Caleb's round one, but it's that Articuno GX. Mm, it is a uh, juicy <laughs> tech option for this matchup especially. Yeah, it, if Natalia decides to load up a big Gardevoir to maybe take a knockout on a Zorark or something, Articuno GX can come up and use its GX attack, which the, the name's escaping me. Well, yeah, I, I think it's Cold Crush GX, something like that. But something the, cool. Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing a few uh, Zoroark control players at Worlds opting to play this as a tech option Isaiah against Williams, things like Buzzwall players, and it's going to be a really good option against this Gardevoir deck as well, because Joey can just not attack and try and win by out-resourcing Natalia, which forces her to put lots and lots of energy into play with her Gardevoir. So we do see her fire off that rare candy into Swampert. She's also going to use that power draw to uh, get herself three cards here and uh, just a few energy cards. She does pick up a Brooklet Hill, which is going to be nice for trying to get um, maybe some Alolan Volpix down. She could pay retreat and maybe even finish her turn strong with a Beacon here. Yeah, a Beacon, definitely a good option. You're not really being pressured by a deck like Joe's, and especially since it's round five now, uh, this kind of surprise of the Zora control is gone. Mm -hmm. y you know the players that are playing it. You're like, okay, well, almost all the Americans were choosing to play this deck. Uh, so you know kind of a game plan. Mm -hmm. And you actually see that in her discarding the max potion with power draw because that's a card that you're not really going to be using that much unless the game goes wrong for Joe, which if the game goes wrong for Joe, you're winning anyway. That's right. So she is going to pay retreat with that fair energy and she's going to be able to use that Beacon, which is so effective at helping you search out more Pokemon. If her hand's not looking too strong, she can try and find herself something like a Tapu Lele, but uh, instead, she's going to be looking for an another Alolan Vulpix, and the one thing she's going to need to keep an eye on is the amount of Rolts that she actually is able to put onto her field, because right now, she's filled her board with Swampert, Tapu Lele, another Mudkip, and oftentimes, in, in order to reach and sort of outrun the sort of hammers and disruption cards that uh, Joey is going to try and do here, um, She's going to require Secret Spring, I think, for that a lot of the time. Yeah, especially since Swampert has, I think, three retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one going to be one of Joe's bit best targets for Countercatcher or Guzma. So let's see what 
Joe is able to pull off here. He's got that Zerua in the active. Well, potentially lots of Zeruas coming down this turn. He does open up with an Ultra Ball here. Going to get rid of a Plumeria. And he's got an, a, no, a load of supporters in his hand as well. He's going to opt to get rid of that Rescue Stretcher. Every card that he does start discarding, of course, he can sometimes access once again with resource management, which is kind of the end game goal for his deck. Once he's eventually sort of out-resourced Natalia, it's often down to a Ranguru getting you extra um, pal pads and crushing hammers and these sorts of disruptive tools. Yeah, we could actually see uh, Joe, if his hand allows it, go for a game plan of Guzma the Ralts and actually take a knockout mm -hmm. uh, since it's the only Ralts in play. It's probably the biggest threat against his deck as well. Um, and for a deck that really tries to control the game like Joe's, your whole game plan is to have your opponent not play uh, like their deck to the best of their ability. Yeah, absolutely. This is where the Zoroark control deck differs from all the others. It's also just very good at putting pressure on with damage. If you can deal with the Ralts, that's really Natalia's only option for the following turn. And you can see Joe, he's already highlighted that. He's traded once and evolved the bench, which is crucial. Yeah, and he was already eyeing up Guzma. that Guzma. So up comes Ralts. It's going to buy him more time, more trades, and is also going to give him even more access to cards because he's taking a prize here. Yeah. Uh, not the perfect start from Joe, but it's almost perfect. Yeah, it's really strong, and especially because Natalia didn't opt to beacon for any rolls. She's going to have to try and find a way to get multiple of them as she promotes her Tapu Lele here. Her board is looking a little bit awkward after that big knockout from Joe early on. Yeah, have, having three double colorless in hand as well uh, could be the reason she promoted the Tapu Lele GX. Just maybe I can squeeze a knockout in with energy drive, uh, like kind of survive past these enhanced hammers, these crushing hammers, these plumerias. It definitely does allow her to put some pressure on the board, which is obviously vital. She is going to grab herself a nest ball with her mysterious guidance, which is a great option to get two bolts into play. So Joe can't just pick off one by one each turn. And she's also eyeing up a second item here, which is going to be the timer ball to hopefully get herself maybe even a second Swampert if she really wants to, um, depending on what else she has going on in her hand here. Yeah, well, again, uh, we, we see the kind of problem against a deck like this Zorark GX deck where if you try to do your normal game plan and I'll get two Swampert set up, power draw through my deck, get a Gardevoir set up, and like take a big knockout, uh, it's really not the approach you want to take. No. It's, it can get very punished, but that's the thing. Natalia had to put down the extra mud kit just for security. We saw how awkward her or Robin's deck was without it, so she definitely valued getting Swampert into play as quickly as possible, which is fair enough, but uh, she's just going to have to end her turn here with an energy drive for 80 damage on the Zoroark. Meanwhile, Joe picks up a second crushing hammer from the top of his deck. Uh, one thing that could be really really crushing here is uh, if he finds his copy of Team Skullgrunt being <laughs> able to discard the two double colorless that Natalia has in her hand. That would be Granted, he doesn't know draw. it. But if he has that read... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that could be possible. Obviously, the sort of safest move is him just looking for something like an Acer Roller if he wants to do that. He could even just pay retreat and then any drive is much less of a threat and even so is... Uh, the infinite force as well. Um, we don't. We know he does have max potion. He's already discarded one with a trade. We are going to see him <laughs> with an actual official Pokemon coin here, uh, going for the crushing hammer and getting rid of that double colors energy, which is a big deal. And, and then uh, there we see just a Cynthia from Joe. Yeah, but just one Zoroark in play. He doesn't quite have access to everything just yet. So refreshing that hand again. He still has that retreat option available to him if he feels that he's unsafe in any way but at the very least he could end his turn with a nice Riotous Beating if he wishes. Yeah, uh, really just showing the power of Zorark GX here. Let's see what he can grab off the Cynthia. Obviously looking for more Zoroarks, that Ditto could also become a Mag Cargo as well for even more control of what he's gonna draw into. That's always something that you're eyeing up. And uh, let's see, that, it looks That's like the power of this deck too. Yeah. We saw round one where Ditto almost always became a Alolan Muck. Uh -huh. Uh, but this matchup, your opponent doesn't really have abilities on basics. So, okay, well, I'm going to get him cargo. That way 
I literally get to switch my deck for any card I want every turn. Ditto is incredible in every matchup. That's the joy of the card, and it means that you have you know, the option to use some of these lesser seen stage one cards like that Alola Muck for the matchup that you need it. And now Joe able to trade into another Zoroark to trade again. He picks up an Ultra Ball that can get him even more outs. Another Zoroark in his hand. He's done excellently here. Yeah, uh, just this is the perfect turn three now where he doesn't really have a way to heal the Zoroark, but he can retreat uh, and then attack with something else if he chooses to, or he can just kind of play it by ear. Like He has so many options, especially in his hand. And a trade away that Gladian. He's content that uh, he can access Aranga if he needs to again. He's drawn into that limitation Sableye. That could end up becoming a win condition for him. As you've already mentioned, Jeremy, that three retreat cost on Swampert. If you combine that with a limitation, it could be very awkward. Joe is also going to go for the Lysander Labs, putting that into play, making it even more difficult for Natalia to finish off the Zoroark if he opts to attack with it. We're also going to see the Ultra Ball here. He's actually going to get rid of his Sableye and he's going to find himself that Oranguru, so he can start using resource management if he wishes straight off the bat here. Yeah, I like this play a lot. Uh, he also has the option of getting Macargo, which I don't know if he has another trade left, but if he does, it could also just get Oranguru. Yeah, he started off by sort of putting his Zoroark sideways, but he sort of abandoned that um, strategy um, just uh, as he got more and more Zoroarks <laughs> onto the board. Uh, so we don't know if well, he can become, trade once becomes more. It a hassle. Enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's just too much to do, right? So he's going to go for that uh, smooth over with the Mag Cargo, evolving up that Ditto Prison Star. So he's going to have the option to get pretty much anything he wants every turn now. And it's just such a such an insane thing to say that you can have the card you want every single turn. Yeah, uh, and it's never too early to start resource managing, uh, especially in a matchup where your opponent, like you're already up a prize, which is kind of the reverse of what your deck wants to do. you like, okay, I'll sacrifice a Zorua, then I'm just going to counter catcher and deck you out. Uh, but taking that prize on the Ralts means he can play a little bit with this. Uh, he, so he put the pressure on with the Riotus beating, 100 damage on that Tapu Lele. But it's really just sitting there like, please knock me out. <laughs> yeah. Natalia doesn't want, like, she also just wants to move out of the active position. There's so much, so many questions that Joe's already asking just by having knocked out one Ralts. Now she's having to use Time Ball to try and uh, dig for some stage twos and make her play cards. It just all goes into the game plan of Joe here. Looks like she hit a double heads though, which is a nice little swing for her. Yeah, uh, that's two Gardevoir GX there. And then with that Alola Ninetales getting just everything she needs from the previous turn, I believe. And then Here comes Double Gardevoir. She's got at least one rare candy in her hand. Just a bunch of uh, double colorless energies, though. She's going to use Power Draw, getting rid of that Ultra Ball. There's Oof. the second rare candy. It's a nice rip from her, but she's still, uh, still looking for more energy cards here. She does have Guzma in addition to... Uh, fair energy, so she could get her Gardevoir active if she wants to finally move this Tapu Lele and get it out of uh, out of the line of fire as well. Yeah, it does have the option of playing the Guzma on the Macargo mm -hmm. and taking a knockout with Secret Spring and Double Colorless, uh, kind of stifling Joe's like complete lock, but really still not progressing the game much for herself. She's actually opting to Ultra Ball away, that Guzma, continuing to get her board set up as much as possible, it looks like. And uh, she's actually just going to take no target here. So she's thinning her hand for her own Lily by the looks of things um, to just draw more cards, try and build a big guard of art to start swinging. Uh, if she gets another Fair Energy, she could just pay Retreat out of this uh, Tapu Lele. So maybe she's just trying to eye up the actual Zorak of the active, seeing as though it's already got damage counters on it. Uh, trying to get a Lily here, a second Secret Spring will obviously finish off the Sorrow Arc, and that's what she's eyeing up here. All right, here's the Lily. Does she hit the very there energy? it is. It, there it is. <laughs> and a Super Boost as well. That could come into play later down the line. So she's committed Double Colors Energy to the back. She's done both Secret Springs this turn in order to get her Gardevoir GX into the active position so that she can Infinite Force for the first two prizes of the game here. Yeah, 150 damage, nothing nothing to laugh at right there. And we know that other than removing energy, Joe has like no real way to deal with a Gardevoir all at once. 230 hit points plus resistance, that's just too much to handle. So if Natalia can make this one Gardevoir just huge, it's going to be really awkward for Joe. 
Yeah, and that's where the card like Articuno GX would come in handy for Joe. But as it looks like right now, uh, his setup is more focused on that Oranguru. Uh, he might even smooth over for a counter catcher to try to bring up that Swampert and just strand it active. Certainly could be the play here. He's committed that double colorless energy to the Oranguru. He's also used Cynthia. He does have switch cards in his deck as well, so he can move into this Oranguru if he wants to this turn. But I think you're spot on. Looking for something like that counter catcher is going to be a big deal for him to try and slow down Natalia because this Gardevoir can get out of control very easily. Yeah, it's already looking pretty sweet now. Uh, Joe's hand does have a timer ball, but doesn't really need anything. Yeah, I think maybe he was trying to get a little bit of extra thinning going. He just had the unfortunate scenario of just missing both. Um, he is going to get his first trade going here, seeing what he can get. He still has smooth over available, so he's going to do his first trade to see if he gets the card regardless, so he can smooth over for other stuff. Now we're going to see, I believe it's a second timer ball. Um, oh, and then the dice went off the table. We're going to see. He's got one heads at least, and he gets the tails on the second try but he's once again able to thin out a Zoroark from his deck. He can also take an extra look here before opting to use Smooth Over if he wants to with his final trade. Uh, yeah, so uh, one interaction that you uh, might want to think about when playing a deck like this is uh, when to Smooth Over. Mm -hmm. So you have access to two trades. So if you're needing just one card, it's probably better just to Smooth Over first and then get that one card right away, then you really have everything. But since he's needing a combination of cards like Countercatcher, like a Switch or something like that, then it really puts it on himself to, okay, well, I'm going to try to give me myself the best odds to draw one of them, and then mm -hmm. I can smooth over, search for the other one. Yeah, if there's two one-off cards and you're using the first trade before smooth over, you have the option to hit either of them and then smooth over for the second target. <laughs> so that's definitely something, uh, some good sequencing from Joe, showing why he's at the top today and has been at the top for the last couple seasons. He is going to put one card to the top of his choice, use his second trade. Looks like he's going to get rid of a Tapu Lele GX. Let's see if he can get this Orangaroo into the active. He has put a switch to the top, so at the very least he can go for a resource management. We are going to see another flip here. This could be for a Crushing Hammer, which yeah, does and get a heads. heads. He's debating now what's the most important energy to get rid of. Gardevoir needs a fairy in order to do any of its attacks, but of course the double colorless counts as 60 damage. So it looks like, seeing as though the Orangaroo only has 120 hit points anyway, you may as well just go for the fair energy to try and make it more difficult for Natalia. And uh, he is going to end his turn with that in the uh, resource management to get back some of these more awkward cards to really start running Natalia out of options. Yeah, and if you think about it, uh, she kind of uh, hit that last fairy energy off of that Lily last turn maybe doesn't have another one and we see the super boost and actually double colorless in her hand as well so pretty good uh read hitting the fairy energy there yeah really nice read from joe he's also going to put back a double colorless energy into his deck as we do see natalia now she's got lots of stage twos in play the super boost is live but you have to pick and choose your moment to get the most value out of it because if you're just going to spend it on an orangaroo you're never happy with that because you know that joe will always just remove it straight away Fortunately for her, off the power draw, there's that fair energy. She can definitely commit it and take another prize this turn. We are going to see that attachment from the secret spring, you would imagine. And let's see what else she can do. It's such an interesting interaction. Joe, she knows, has uh, Team Skullgrunt as well as Plumeria. So you have to really try and play around both at the same time. So it seems like she's going to commit the double colors energy to the back. And she's going to go for the infinite force to take her third prize of the game here. Yeah, still having that super boost as like her ace in the hole mm -hmm. in her hand. But like you said, it, it's not really safe there against a deck like this uh, from Joe. But at the same time, there's already so many energy on the board. Will Joe have the opportunity to even remove any? Looks like here comes the counter catcher, bring that Swamper up into the active. And we're going to see him once again try and recycle his hand here. If he can get into something like a Limitation Sableye and try and trap this Swampert, maybe that's a line that he could go for. Um, Natalia doesn't play any Switch cards outside of Guzmas, so that's definitely something that he's going to keep an eye on. She's already used one Guzma as well. And uh, only plays two. And only plays two, so it is reliant on... You know, you can sort of cheat with your counts because you can always recycle them with the Twilight, but not if the Swampert's active. Yeah. 
So Joe, definitely highlighting and knowing where to prey on for this archetype. He is going to try and see what he can get off these six cards. He still has both trades and smooth over available, so still plenty more plays available to him. He's drawn into a few timables, so that's definitely some free trade bait for him if he needs to. And let's see what else he can dig into this turn. Yeah, uh, just having access to any one card in his deck, it's a little bit awkward when you do need multiple. And with Natalia's two Gardevoir in play, she could have a turn where she just loads up the Swamper to retreat or even just a Super Boost Swamper deal a quick 160. Yeah, 160 is definitely a threat. Obviously, you want to use your Super Boost for a big knockout in the best of situations, but you can still use it just to keep pressure on a lot of the time. So we're going to see Joe. He really is agonizing as Natalia has built quite the powerful board. Um, just so much damage from these Gardevoirs. Joe is now going to smooth over, it looks like, a card to the top here and see what he can do. Is he going to go for another resource management this turn? That's got to be the end game that you look for. It, it, it definitely uh, matters on what he drew off the Cynthia uh -huh. and like the trades. Because uh, he does need that switch that he put back. Um, mm -hmm. He only has one Oranguru and then a Rescue Stretcher in his deck now. Uh, and then, of course, energy as well. Uh, really running thin. We saw him discard a rainbow energy earlier on. There was a retreat with a double colorless as well. And then a, a Zork that got knocked out with a double colorless. So. so here's trade number two. Looks like he put the rescue stretcher to the top. He does have another crushing hammer as well. That and does get wow, a heads, which is nice heads. for him. Going to, again, try and attack those fair energies. If there's two Gardevoirs both threatening double colorless, it feels like fairy is the correct option. And uh, let's see if there's any other plays he can make this turn, or if he's just going to have to try and pass it over and hope that Zoroark with 210 is enough to tank uh, for the following turn. We are going to see that rescue stretch at the very least. He's going to grab himself a Ranguru, maybe going for all three targets here just to have access to them. Here comes second Ranguru. It's interesting, the deck plays two Ranguru and also Gladion. It just shows yeah. how important it is to chain that resource management attack throughout the game. Yeah, it's actually interesting that both the Rangaroo were in the discard as well. Yeah. Uh, really limiting what he can do. And we might just even see a pass here. Yeah, it feels like the safest option, to be honest. Uh, seeing as though he's only just put those Orangaroos back into his deck from the discard pile. Obviously, Gardevoir does do a lot of damage, but it kind of, kind of helps if your opponent gets you along the way as well by attaching to their own guys to attack. But... Joe's strategy doesn't involve that, so he can just hope that Gardevoir is tanky enough to uh, survive an attack, and maybe you can do things like Acerola or Max Potion late and down the line and completely just render her attacks useless. Yeah, and uh, there is the last Guzma from that power draw here. It'll be interesting to see what she decides to go for. Natalia, she could be tempted. If she's able to get energy, she could be tempted to go down to two prize cards and knock out the Macargo, but she has to know what Joe's been trying to do. She, yeah. He's already pulled out the Swamp at once. I think the safest option for her, as she starts counting, uh, you could just see in her head she was starting to count the uh, the infinite force map, so she's going all in on a big Gardevoir, it looks like. The safest option, of course, is to use your Guzma and use Twilight to recycle those Guzmas and the fair energies so that you have enough sustainable power to finish out the game, but it looks like she's uh, she's going all in on this Gardevoir. Well, yeah, I don't even know if she has a basic fairy to really twilight with. Uh, so if you're going to yeah. have to use that boost energy, might as well take a knockout here. Going uh, down to one prize. One, one thing that's uh, going to be a little tricky, though, is, like you said, he's Joe's going to bring up that Swamper again. Yeah, uh, uh, Natalia does have a little bit of play. Secret Spring does help, mm -hmm. and she could retreat. And if the Super Boost isn't dealt with, then it could take another big knockout or even just Twilight. She's just trying to be as aggressive as possible, force Joe to have all of it at once. Yes, you can start removing all my energies. Yes, you have all the answers in your deck, but can you do it all this turn? Can you gust my Swamper into the active? Can you also get rid of Super Boost? And uh, you also need to you know, not draw into more double colorless and fair energy for me to just win next turn. That mag cargo is so fragile, so easy to deal with. Uh, obviously, she's out of Guzma right now, but uh, it's definitely a lot of questions being asked right now. 
Yeah, uh, one thing that is very good for Natalia is the fact that she went down to one prize card. It is very easy for her to take a knockout on a Rangaroo, and later on in the game, that's what Joe's plan is going to be. Granted, he doesn't know Natalia's list, so he could be expecting more Guzma and play around that somehow. That's definitely true. We did see with that first trade, Joe was able to pick up a counter catcher. So potentially that's going to be what he goes for as he smooths over before his second trade here. It's got to be what he looks to do, hopefully in combination with maybe like a Plumeria, something along those lines to make this Gardevoir lose, you know, 120 damage all at once. It's going to be a big deal. Yeah, uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what Joe chose. And let's see. There is the Plumeria that he puts Plumeria, the top. Skull Grunt. That is a pretty good trade there. That's really nice. But can he, like, as you said, it's just so risky to start going for a Rangro at any point. He is going to do it, though. And uh, we are going to see. He's just going to have to hope that Natalia can't get into another double colorless and a fair energy. You can see her scouting through her own discard pile. There's one double colorless already discarded, two already in play, and a lot of fair energy used. So we are going to see the counter catcher, the switch into a Oranguru, and now he's just crossing his fingers that Natalia can't find the combination to end this one Oranguru. All right, and there is the Plumeria. Super Boost is going to the Lost Zone, folks. Uh, it did its job for one turn, taking a big knockout on Tapu Lele GX, but is it good enough? Can Natalia pull it out and take a surprising victory over this really dominant Zora control deck? That was a very interesting pal pad from Joe, pu putting just two Cynthias back into his deck. Um, so he's just hoping that this Swampert can stay. I think he has to, o he can only ever think, like, he's lost the game if Natalia always has the cards. So he just has to go for Cynthia and the best case scenario to put himself back into a good amount of hand cards so he can continue to control the game from there. Yeah, you really have to play to your outs. And that's one thing that these players are really good at doing. And you see here <laughs> the full three crushing hammer with resource management. Uh, not really choosing an order going there. <laughs> and by outs, we just mean crushing hammers. Yeah. Those are the outs that we're looking for. We do see Natalia go for one. Oh, there's one fair energy. I think she might have also another rare candy available. No, she can't get a second Swampert out. Oh, no. She's got a big hand size, just a load of lilies, it looks like. So I don't know if she can play many Ultra Balls to maybe get into range with even a lily, something like that. But there's a lot of cards that she can burn here. She can get rid of one Ultra Ball. And uh, she's going to have a look through her deck. She only has one Fair Energy left. Oh, no. She actually cannot move now. I think Joe's got her. I, I think that's it. Wow, that is incredible. Natalia plays only three double colorless energy. There's one in the discard pile, uh, one on each Gardevoir. And that means that this Swampert is not going anywhere. As we mentioned, she had the option to go for the GX attack to try and recycle those Guzmas. We knew that Joe was always going to make this play, but man, it, it's just trapped her. Yeah, uh, and it, now you have to think, when is the time to scoop up the game and move to game two? This I'm match <sighs> has gone on for a little under 30 minutes so far, and it's game one here. And the simple fact is she's seen her deck. She knows what's in there. It, it's down to Joe to make a mistake for her to win the game now. And she knows a player of his caliber is just not going to make that error. Even committing one attachment is just, we know that there's smooth over and that Joe could recycle Plumeria or Skullgrunt or any of those cards. And he'll still be in good shape. So, I mean, I can't believe Joe's found the out here. Natalia with aggressive play, but just being caught out at the last hurdle here. Yeah, and it all comes down to that double cutlass on the second Gardevoir, too. Yeah, she was trying to play around things like Team Skullgrunt. As we said, Joe has so many options. Picking the right one at the right time is his challenge, but it also means that Natalia has to try and play around multiple every single turn. And that commitment of the second double cutlass energy has been very, very painful for her. Yeah, so if, if she scoops now, there's two thoughts that can go through Joe's mind. Like, okay, she only plays two Guzma. The Guzma was prized. Yeah. Uh, and that is very valuable information going forward uh, because that means if you can avoid a Twilight GX like he's done this game, mm -hmm. the matchup is almost like, I, I would have to say like 75% your favor 
and he's going to see that there are no other energies in Natalia's hand with this Team Skull Grunt. As he said, it could either be one double colorless energy that's prized or one Guzma that's prized that's made him win this first game. He's also got another Crushing Hammer in his hand to boot. He's going to start counting that uh, deck. He knows that he's getting there. If she couldn't find it last turn, the chances are that he's in a good position. If he can Crushing Hammer heads, he's going to feel very safe here. Wow, right, he's I flipped think very that, I nicely. I think you need to concede right here. Uh, just the fact that you need to save that information that Joe doesn't really know. Because if you play out this game and he sees your entire deck, he's going to know that you're soft to those counter catchers. And Joe, he's just push putting on the pressure. Plumeria, Crushing Hammer, and uh, Team Flaregrunt as well. He's going to... Or Team Skullgrunt, I should say. And uh, Natalia, as we said, we've seen through the deck, she can't win <laughs> and, and there we go she finally yep. does concede that first game very long and you can see joe slumps back in his chair with a big sigh of relief that he was able to clinch that win he's probably like man something was prized <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be something prized but that's the thing uh, natalia she's um made space for this stage two or two stage two lines and a thick stage one line she's playing three alone and volpix and a 2-1 line of the Alolan Ninetales. She's playing one Water and two Fairy Alolan Ninetales. She's playing two Tapu Lele. She's playing all those Elms. She's playing... Well, no, actually. So I was looking at her list. There is zero Professor Elms oh lecture. My she is going the full four Nest Ball, four Ultra Ball, four Lily. Wow, that is very exciting. She's using Brooklet Hill, I guess, to also sort of supplement that to try and get multiple basics out. But, man, I mean, that's just giving her the best odds, I guess, of trying to get that Alolan Ninetales on turn two alongside, like, maybe already some rare candy pieces as you go. As we saw with Robin, he was oftentimes, like when he was getting Elm, sometimes he would still have to beacon to end his turn. Uh, but if you're using Lily and are able to hit your Nest Balls, you can then have those extra cards for the turns going forward. Yeah, and uh, Lily is always live throughout the game until you have a hand of just a million cards with power draw. But uh, being able to combat cards like Mars Shadow and... Uh, really just y you can sacrifice some of the cards with ultra ball just because it'll thin your hand down for the lily and as we see her list as well she plays three copies of max potion so it's harping back to the list that we saw right in the early internationals uh, last year uh, back in europe 2017 uh, there was list playing up to four max potion at times and she's playing three copies alongside the Alolan Nine Tails to help search them out at the same time as well. So these are all cards that aren't helpful against Joe a lot of the time, and it's meant that he's just about been able to squeak that first game. Yeah, uh, Natalia with one prize left. Uh, it's so heartbreaking to see. And then looking at the prizes, you see double colorless and a fairy energy as well. Definitely going to come into play if Natalia can't get a quick start and take a couple prizes here. Joe now, he's also going to put his prizes down. As we know, he plays that um, the Gladian to access anything he needs to. Mm -hmm. The Articuno GX didn't come into play, but it definitely could have and is also something lying in wait um, that is in the prize cards, but it could be something that he could access through that Gladian if he needs to, if once again, Natalia goes for the approach to make one big um, Gladian GX. Yeah, and one thing of note, uh, at least with this game, uh, right now with the double colorless and the rainbow and the prizes for joe he only plays <laughs> three double colorless and two rainbow energy so he might be forced to gladian for one of those earlier on in the game uh, just to even play the game we see natalia commit a choice band to her active rolls and she's also going to go for that turn one lily uh, looks like for a good amount of cards here, five cards. She finds herself another Rolts, so everything going swimmingly so far. She does have double colorless energy in her hand. Obviously seeing Joe with all of the crushing hammers and all the other hate cards, she's gonna wanna hold on to that until she can get value from it. Whereas Joe, he's gonna have to commit early on to that Professor Elm, I believe, which was in his hand, and he's gonna have a look through and see what he has available to him. Yeah, and there, He's eyeing down those three Zorua. Yeah, I mean, that is the deck at the end of the day. He might want to look to see if there's Ditto available to him for a bit more flexibility. Again, trying to get that Mag Cargo online that we saw he used so well to guarantee those really crucial cards at the right time. But at the same time, just getting as many Zoroark in play is never a bad idea. He is just going to go indeed for those three Zorua straight away. 
and uh, try and get his board going on turn two. Actually, nope. he's changed his mind. <laughs> Ditto could be anything. Yeah, he probably, he probably didn't see it. Yeah. Like, oh, it's prized. And then <laughs> do the last double check before you start shuffling to finish the card. And you're like, oh, wait. No, it's here. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. There you go. He is going to grab himself that ditto. As you said, it can be. it's just so flexible. Getting the Mag Cargo online as early as possible is always a great deal. And uh, in the worst case scenario, it can just be an extra Zorowark. And that's absolutely fine for him as well. So the ideal turn one from Joe, simply just getting that Elm. That's all you really need. Yeah, uh, the pressure is definitely going to be on Natalia to see how fast her start can be. Granted, it, it's looking pretty good. Uh, there is no fairy energy in her hand right now as of the moment, but a lot could change, especially with the Lola Ninetales GX coming down. Here comes the Alolan Ninetales. She's going to grab Rare Candy Timer Ball. Some big flips coming up to see if she can get her Swampert rolling or even start swinging with Gardevoir. She also has an Ultra Ball in her hand, so she's definitely going to get something going, even if that Timer Ball does fail her. So she's going to shuffle up and uh, attempt to use this Time Ball and see if she can hit that double heads that she hit in that game one. Yes. Oh, wow, running hot, <laughs> feeling good. You, you see Joe just, like, move his hand, like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Go for it. Just grab your Gardevoirs and your Swampert. And uh, she is going to have a little scout what else she needs this turn. She has some nice uh, power draw if she wants to start getting rid of stuff. Wow, she's only going for one target here. Yeah, I think... Uh, this is the one drawback to relying on Lily as much. Uh, only having the one rare candy, thanks to that mysterious guidance, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to want to clog your hand with more Stage 2 Pokemon. That's definitely the case. She is. She does still have that Ultra Ball in her hand as well uh, to thin her hand down that little bit more with the Lily. So that's definitely something she might be uh, considering here, not wanting to draw oh, too many looks cards. Looks like uh, she chose for Cynthia instead. Sa yeah. Same reasoning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the true. Gardevoir is going to get shuffled back. And uh, you can see Joe, complete concentration here as Natalia starts to build up her board. She's got a fair energy on her Gardevoir. Looks like she's found a way to get her Alolan Vulpix into play. And she's simply going to go for the infinite force for 60 damage on Joe's Tapu Lele here. Now, that's not too bad. Uh, it's putting a lot of pressure for the least amount of cards. So it's just one energy, and thanks to that choice band, it kind of boosts the damage a little bit. And it puts this Tapu Lele in range of just being knocked out next turn with a double colorless. One thing we know all too well is that Gardevoir GX can snowball. Those secret springs get on the board, double colorless can come out of nowhere, and you can start doing a lot of damage. So this Innocent 60 definitely is doing a lot of work and pressurizing two prizes um, next turn. So Joe's going to try and have to move this Lele out of the way at some point. Um, he is holding on to double colors energy. I think he has switch as well, so he has options available to him. Uh, it looks like his... Um, enhanced hammer. Yeah, enhanced hammer's there as well. Uh, he's got all sorts of options. We are going to see the first trade here from Joe. And looks like he's agonizing over which supporter to get rid of. He's actually just going to get rid of the enhanced hammer, which is actually a really interesting pick, how impactful it can be. He's drawn into another timer ball, so hopefully on this roll he can get going. There's one, one heads. heads at least. One's off screen from us. Let's see if he's grabbing two things. Maybe the dream from him as well. Oh, yep. There we go. He's able to grab himself that Zoroark and Mag Cargo. He can get that second he, Zoroark into play. He gives the same hand motion even for <laughs> himself. Like, yeah, that's timer ball. Sometimes it's just a busted card. Getting two searches for free is very, very strong. We're now going to see before he's that second trade, go for that smooth over. Uh, well, actually, he's debating it right now whether he should. He's going to put Lysander Labs into play, trying to shut off Natalia's choice band. Again, trying to make it harder for this Tapu Lele to get knocked out. And uh, there we see the Cynthia. So choosing to save the trade and the smooth over for the brand new hand of six. Yeah, he had the option to play the switch and even attach a double colors energy if you wanted to start putting pressure on the Gardevoir. That's the other thing you can do um, with this deck. You can stop a Gardevoir going too big by just putting damage counters on it so that they essentially have to, yes, they can take a knockout, but then Joe could follow up with a second Zoroark and just finish off uh, the Gardevoir. But the fact that he plays Lysander Labs means it's probably just not reachable for him yeah. because he's not going to play choice bands and that resistance of Gardevoir is so frustrating. Yeah, um, as of right now, you're doing 60 damage. Yeah. <laughs> That's not too great. So instead, he's going to go for the smooth over now that he's got his fresh six. And he's going to 
grab himself whatever he wants here and be able to trade straight into it. He just flashed it straight onto the floor, so I can't really see what it, he's going for. It might for. have been a double colorless, mm -hmm. uh, especially since he prized double colorless and a rainbow. Yeah. Uh, he will probably have to search out a couple of his energies to get going. Looks like he's got uh, he's drawn back into power pad. Switch is still available to him. He is going to do that second trade now to get rid of a Professor Realms lecture. Picking up. Oh, looks uh, like it was Oranguru. either Oranguru or Crushing Hammer from the smooth over. Yeah, well, those are the two cards he drew at least. We are going to see. Man, he has been doing very well on Crushing Hammer. Flips in general, Timer Ball, Crushing Hammer. This is a very flippy deck. Feels good to flip heads <laughs> as. Uh, Joe now may just be content to pass here. He obviously has the option to switch, but then you have two things that are damaged and the Tapu Lele is not being healed. He could try to um, just tank another hit with the Tapu Lele and Ace Rotor it all next turn, or Max Potion it all in one. So he's going to be content to pass here. Natalia drawing that Guzma from the top. Uh, again, going to be a card that she's really going to have to keep track of, but <laughs> having to discard it because, you know, another card you need to keep track of, Double Colorless, was the last card in her hand. Yeah, and she needs more cards. She's going to have to use Tapu Lele here, using that Wonder Tag. Um, depending on whether she wants to commit this Double Colorless energy, she may just want to Lily or Cynthia. Either way, she needs a fresh hand here. And uh, looks like she's gone for the Lily. So that indicates that she's probably going to commit the Double Colorless to the active and uh, start trying to swing. You can see now she's debating whether or not she wants to play all these cards. Um, there comes the double colors energy. I think the other card in her hand is actually uh, energy retrieval, which oh. is a card that we didn't see come into play uh, game one. She's used it just for one target here so that she can secret spring and Lily for a fresh six cards. She does draw into energy as well as uh, choice band, ultra ball, rare candy. She can get another guard of online here uh, which is what she needs to Secret Spring again to take a knockout, obviously, because Lysander Labs is in play. Yeah, Lysander's Lab is a pretty innocuous card. Uh, when it came out, not really that good. People forgot it existed. And then it started popping up in a few decks, and uh, one of my favorite decks it was in was the Vikavolt uh, Rayquaza. But here, it's showing its worth in the Zora Control. Uh, just completely mitigating any tools your opponent would have. It's pretty much always choice bands that you're trying to deny. I mean, in those really nice situations, you can use Lysander's Labs against like Malamar players a so that they can't skateboard. get their Chimeco <laughs> into the active because that's something you're always very scared of. Um, but just saying no to choice band is such a big deal, especially because, again, you can use resource management. You can always win the stadium war as long as you have enough turns to do it. So... Um, it's just such a great option to make sure that your opponent can't take knockouts here as Joe does go for that wonder tag. He's also going to use Pal Pad to recycle some of these other supporters that he's put into the discard pile. Maybe it's just because he wants to resource management back the Pal Pad playing yeah. card so you can recycle the card all over again. It's reverse intuitive, but it does mean that you have an extra Cynthia in your deck now at the very least. Yeah, uh, he also put in a Professor Elms lecture in there as well, but it's just another card that you can discard. Yeah. You don't mind just having more cards that you want to burn. That's the joy of Zoroark. Even the bad cards are good to see. Yep. Here comes that Cynthia. He's going to shuffle in, get a fresh six. He's got still the smooth over, both trades available. So he's going to be looking again just for these crushing hammers, start trying to dwindle down Natalia. Obviously, we saw in the first game, Natalia started going up a lot of prize cards. Joe stayed calm, tried to get rid of as many energies and just do his game plan. And that's what he's going to look to do again and just go for resource management to round out his turn here. And if he can get some crushing hammers along the way, that's going to be great. Yeah, and Natalia is at four prizes after taking that Tapu Lele from... Uh, uh, taking the knockout from the Tapu Lele last turn. He has drawn into one crushing hammer. He's also drawn into the elm that he can discard if he wants to, which is fantastic. Here's going to be the first trade. Did he actually uh, get rid of a card from his hand there? Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, he can get rid of that elm. That's something he was always wanting to do, really. Yeah. Uh, he announced trade and yeah. uh, proved that like he was going to do it. So pretty easy fix there. And then we're going to see the smooth over very casually. And uh, if he doesn't already have energy in his hand, that might be something he looks for. Or it's something later down the line that he might need if he's already got everything in hand. We could even see something like the other enhanced hammer come from him here. Yeah, uh, that's definitely Another true. crushing hammer. 
really just trying to stop this Gardevoir from really taking over the game. Uh, we could even see if he has access to Articuno and the Rainbow Energy. That could be a really cool play as well. We see the Rainbow in his hand. Here is going to be the trade. I wonder what he's actually gone for. Oh, I, I want him to get Articuno <laughs> so bad. <laughs> we all want to see it. Let's see if that's what he's gone for, if he's gone for a more oh, conservative approach. Hammer. Oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest, the Enhanced Hammer is a really good pick. Yeah. And it's going to be very <laughs> useful for you. Um, and the Countercatcher as well in his hand. He was just eyeing up the Mudkip just to check its retreat cost. Instead, he's going to try and go for the Alolan Ninetales, which has a two retreat cost. Yeah. And now he's going to fire off these Crushing Hammers and also the Enhanced Hammer as well. Again, Oof. heads on that fairy is a big, big deal for him. There's the Rainbow Energy onto his Oranguru, so he can start recycling those cards that he's literally just played. Yeah. He's also going to put down another Zerua to boot for even more uh, cycling through his deck. And, and this is exactly what Natalia did not want to happen. Uh, this game is looking like it's going to go on uh, pretty much as long as the previous game. She is in a better position. Uh, she has no Swampert in play, but that means it's something that actually can't get stuck active. Yeah, that's definitely true. She's going to Secret Spring 2. Ooh, she's debating whether it's worth it here. She is going to Secret Spring eventually, and uh, she's just going to fire off a Cynthia here to reset her hand. Uh, she wants to start putting pressure on this Oranga at the very least. She could even go for Snowy Winds and start setting up even something like the Mag Cargo, as we've mentioned earlier, maybe going for um, two prizes at once uh, later down the line as we do see her recycle her hand here. Yeah, and uh, the one bad thing, again, about not having Swampert in play, you don't have access to Power Draw. So... Really, all she has is these Cynthia's and these Lilies to find her energy, where last game we saw her get a lot of the stuff she needed off those power draws. Yeah, and it, it, is, it just shows how impactful that Swampert is. Such an incredible card. We are going to see her. She does have that Ninetales um, to, it, to use Mysterious Guidance to grab herself that rare candy, so she can draw a few more cards here. She looks like she's also picking up the Nest Ball just because it's a nice burnable card yeah. with power draw, similar to what we saw Joe do with his own Pal Pad. So she's going to look through. It already looks like she's running kind of slim on energy cards here. So it's something she has to keep track of once again. Yeah, and the time to really figure out uh, that's going to be hard is when to Twilight GX. It was sort of something that she missed out on last game. She kind of got caught short, just one prize away from the finish line. And uh, this game, she does have one energy on a Gardevoir. Um, to maybe use later on. She's only been able to attach one energy to her active this turn, even after the power draw, so she's had to have a slow turn here, and it just bides really well for Joe, seeing as the clock is still running down, and he can, again, just use his turn to try and remove all the energies that Natalia put on this one. Yeah, missing that energy there was huge, just not applying pressure this turn, especially with just over two minutes left in the game. Uh, it's really looking like Joe's going to be able to stay stay stave off like Natalia's Gardevoir onslaught and pull out the victory 1-0 here. This feels like a lot safer than it was last game. He yeah. was really just uh, hoping that Natalia didn't have the outs. This time he has the buffer of four prize cards for Natalia to take that he didn't have last game, but he's got that ideal setup. He's uh, used two trades already. I think he's already used his um, smooth over as well. Uh, he does have a counter catcher bringing up that chunky swamper all over again. And uh, he yeah, does also have counter crushing catcher, hammer. crushing hammer. I think there's a plumeria in his hand as well, a team Skullgrunt. Yeah, he's and got ooh, options. Finally, a Tails from <laughs> Joe here on crushing hammer. But like I said, he does have that plumeria being able to discard two cards from his hand to discard an energy attached to your opponent's side of the field. He's got the fail safe of the Plumeria if you do flip that Tails, and he's going to once again round out his turn, doing what he did last time, trap that Swamper, and just keep getting back the cards to do the same thing all over again. He's going to pick up that Plumeria as well, and again eyes up that Crushing Hammer, but instead he's going to think better of it and put a switch to the bottom of his deck. And the thing that this deck is really good at doing too is just playing itself. Like, you will play all your cards, disrupt your opponent, but it takes a lot of time, and when you're a control deck, you're very much a slower deck. A lot of these games are going to end 
And Natalia, straight away, she's going to commit her super boost energy alongside a Guzma to take out that mag cargo. She knows that Joe, if he's able to control those cards that he just put to the bottom of his deck to the top, yeah. she's going to be in a lot of trouble. So she needs to remove that from the board, taking her down to three prize cards. Then she could deal with you know, one GX attacker and also one Oranguru to close out the game. So she's trying to be as quick as she can because she knows the time is ticking. Yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see if Joe draws his enhanced hammers, his crushing hammers, his plumeria, or I guess plumeria is not really anything right now because of Cynthia, but he needs to get that super boost off of that Gardevoir GX. That's definitely something that's really threatening his board right now. He, of course, can recycle things like the enhanced hammer, but you want to have immediate answers if at all possible. He's going to have these six cards from the Cynthia and at least two more trades, potentially a third to try and dig for some of these crushing hammers and other trainer answers available to him. All right, well, we got Lysander's Lab, Professor Elm's Lecture, and a couple Ultra Balls here. <laughs> Lots of cards that you're happy to get rid of with trade to try and find better ones. Ooh, he does draw into Enhanced yeah. Hammer. That's the big one. Off that first trade, and with the clock running down to zero here, we'll get confirmation that time has been called, but it looks like the writing is on the wall for Natalia, losing the Super Boost this turn, and just not really having much of a way to come back in time. No, not enough burst for her now that the time has run down. Um, she pretty much needs to have a Twilight GX turn like at some point in this game. We know that she's already lost so much, but time's just not going to permit her to do that. She has two turns to round out the game, and she's just simply not going to have enough juice to get there. Yeah, uh, Joe's played this whole match like wonderfully, and it's been pretty great to see uh, actually trading away a double colorless <laughs> here. You don't care. No, you don't want any of those cards. You just want to stop Natalia having any. He's going to use trade again that last time. and uh, Yeah, so he actually has the crushing hammer, hammer in his hand as well as the counter catcher. So this is the, exactly what Joe well, wanted to do is. this turn. And Natalia that knows. That is game. Yeah, Natalia knows that the time running down means that she's not going to be able to take the prizes in time. Joe did everything, brought up that big chunky retreat swamper all over again and removed the big old super boost from Natalia. Definitely the swing card that she needs to overwhelm Joe's board, but he was able to use that Mag Cargo, Oranguru, and Zoroark combination so effectively to remove every threat that Natalia was able to pose. Now, to be fair, Natalia